Peace. We've got Makua Rothman, Billy Kemper. Welcome to Pipeline. I know both of you have a beloved relationship with this wave behind us. Uh, let's talk about what we've seen already this morning. All indicators said it's just going to start pumping throughout the day. It has not let us down. It's absolutely firing out there, Makua. Yeah, you're right, Chris. It's um, The waves are turning on. The swell's picking up. The scores are getting bigger. And um, what can you say? It's just fireworks all around. And Billy, I know you've had a lot of heats out here. You're probably itching to get out there yourself. In the lineup now, Kelly Slater, Baron Ramia, McGillivray, Jordy Smith. I mean, a surf fans dream this morning. For sure. I mean, first off, that last heat that's continuing. South Africa heat is, uh, you know, two really, really good surfers. Kind of the, the guy who's leading the way for South Africa and then the future. And um, Matthew's got a really good score under his wing. Jordy had in my eyes, the best wave of the day um, on Saturday. And up next, just started, uh, local boy, Baron Mumia, and the GOAT, Kelly Slater. So, I mean, this is definitely fireworks when you're talking about seeing a highlight heat. This is uh, this is one you want to be watching. Yeah, easy, easy promise to make. The next uh, 45 minutes of surfing, at least, is going to be incredible. Speaking about incredible, the performance from young Sammy Pupo. Turning heads at Pipeline. He's on the glass now with Rosie Hodge. That's right, Chris. Well, Sammy Pupo, welcome to the championship tour. This is your job now, getting barreled at Perfect Pipeline. How happy are you? Uh, I'm so happy. My two only heats out at Pipe was the best pipe I've ever seen. So just uh, happy to have some time by myself out there and um, you know, trying to get better and better out here. And your brother said um, when he was on the glass earlier that you're going to surprise all of us. What makes you so comfortable out here? Well, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> it was uh, that's probably the best wave at Pipe so far. So, so happy and just, you know, as I said, enjoying my time out at Pipe by myself and trying to get better every day. And who do you watch to kind of emulate out there? Um, Jones being the guy that I've been watching my whole life to, you know, get ready for this contest. So, um, John is definitely the guy to, to beat out here. Sammy, stoked to have you on tour. I like that, a little bit of honesty in a post-heat interview. I'm not comfortable. Well, with every rep that he gets, just more and more in the zone. Congrats to Sammy Pupo. That brings us to the lineup. 14.30 to go for McGillivray and Jordy Smith. 34.30 to go for Mamiya and Slater. The uh, red jerseys now have the priority, but check it out. You see Jordy Smith in the black jersey. That is your priority heat. Baron Mamiya and Kelly Slater have to give way to McGillivray and Jordy. Now, I know both of you guys have watched young Baron Mamiya's rise, a quick rise to the top. I don't feel at all like Baron Mamiya is going to back down to Kelly Slater. I think a lot of surfers can be starstruck when you enter the water with the goat. But you guys tell me, you've seen Baron's demeanor in and out of the water. He is steely. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Um you know, this is kind of a generational heat. You got Kelly, you got Jordy, and you got Baron in the water. And Baron's been looking up to both of these guys his whole life. And um, he's not backing down to nobody. Like I said, he might be a very humble kid. He is a very humble kid, very well spoken. You know, his demeanor is one of a kind, pure aloha. But when he gets out there in the water, it's another type of aloha he's showing. Aloha, and he wants to send everybody home and show the world he's here to stay. I always hear that term, aloha also means goodbye. So we'll see what Baron's saying at the end of this heat as we see the man himself right now, Baron Mamiya. Wiley wild card. It just gets clamped there. Again, uh, that's an illustration to me of if anybody was going to make it out of that, it's Baron Mamiya. Billy, I know that you've watched Baron for a long time. Strengths and weaknesses. What's your scouting report of Baron Mamiya? I think his. I mean, his strength is his comfort level. You know, he, he's put in the time, he's, he's learned how to work hard and put himself in uncomfortable situations. I mean, he's surfing, here we go, Kelly Slater right behind him. No grab. <laughs> no hands needed. Hey, Baron, welcome to Not the championship the right tour. There. But uh, as far as Baron, I think one thing that he's gotten stronger with is his equipment. Uh, he's made a change over the last couple of years, jumping on sharp eyes boards. And also, not riding those six ones and five elevens out here he which he's known for he's probably i think on a six three right now i know he had a six four and for baron that's a really actually a big board and i think that is um it's something that's going to bring him more strength i mean everyone thinks john's riding six ones out here but he's on six sixes and i think 
that's something he kind of fools people with as he rides six twos at 10 foot, 12 foot Hall Eva. But when it comes to pipeline, you know, I think there is obviously there is the pros of riding a smaller board, but it only goes to a certain extent of where you're just holding yourself back from those big drivey waves. And I mean, here goes Kelly right here. It doesn't even, oh, he does touch his rail just to get over the foam ball. And yeah, I think that's something that Baron has definitely uh, gained some strength with over this season, most importantly, is starting to listen to some of his peers around and just up his size on, a, on his equipment. It's just going to give him more confidence, and I can see it lately with his surfing, training, everything. He's in a really good place, and I mean, if there's one person in this event that these guys should be worried about, it's definitely him as the wild card. You know, he has nothing to lose, everything to gain right now. No doubt. Well, Kelly Slater just pulled some guru moves right there, getting priority back. Let's go to Strider Wasilewski in the channel with the update. Oh, man, I was just watching Baron weave through that barrel, and, it, and it's hard to say, but, you know, it can be almost too west, and the wave bent out and didn't have that little bit of a north hook on it, and so it just kind of went away from him and almonded out and didn't have the opening for, for Baron. It would have been a huge score right behind him. We saw Kelly, and in my mind, I was thinking, short, stubby, fast barrel, come out and kick out right before Baron, get back out there for a priority. It's exactly what he did, and it, it was just interesting to see his, you know, mind and the art of war at play and you can just see it before he's taken off what he's thinking and it's so fun to watch you know having that that connection watching him do it it's so fun to to see the mind working before he even caught the wave and you know coming out of the barrel identifying he could get out and not run him over i mean literally almost ran him over when he kicked out of that wave so incredible performance right there to get back out there he's against the wall though bear mamia is so good in the barrel it's unbelievable so he's gonna have a tough time taking him down out here. So Strider, um, speaking of Barry Mambina being so good in the barrel, what little differences and subtle differences do you see in the backside strategy or styles of surfing between Kelly the Goat and their wild card, Barry Mambina, as they thread through these barrels? What are the little differences you see in the barrel there? The difference uh, is, it's pretty simple. I feel like uh, Baron actually does a lot of work moving through the, hit, the, the wave in the barrel. Like, basically doing a hula hoop maneuver with his hips and he's using the hips to keep going through the barrel whereas kelly sets a line grabs the rail and uses his body against the wall so i feel like you know baron looks like she's surfing the wave more of a freestyle and almost like a break a goofy foot would where he just moves the board through whereas kelly's using his body more here we go look at this beautiful wave right here nice pump through there coming through look at that barrel come on on out wow Beautiful ride right there. And on cue, on cue right there, Mamiya illustrating exactly what Strider was just saying, hula hooping through that too. Perfectly executed. And then the next wave, the clamp down, hits Jordy Smith, who right now needs a 3-5-1 to get up and above Matthew McGillivray. McGillivray's out the back with priority, as well as Kelly Slater. Matthew and Jordy have 8.40 to go. Kelly and Baron, 28 to go. Sets pulsing through as we wait for scores. The anticipation just builds every time you see a bump on the horizon. What's it like when you're sitting out there with four surfers and you just see the horizon start to lift? I mean, these are the, the heats you dream of, especially for Baron. I actually had a heat with Kelly out here um, about four years ago, a man-on-man -man heat in this event as a wild card. And I think Kelly had two nines and I had two eights. And it's like this kid, you know, if there's anyone he wants to surf against, it's probably Kelly or John right now. And watching his replay right here, I see so much of young Jamie O'Brien. I mean, the, his from his body type to the way he drags and this most importantly, the way he pumps on his backhand, that is like, to me, I see Jamie O'Brien when I see him. I'm sure a lot of the inspiration came from that, and he's kind of that up-and-coming Jamie. So it's really cool to see. He's making everyone proud. He's got family, friends, everyone down cheering him on. And uh, let's uh, see if he can get what it get the wave to take out the goat. And uh, looks like, by the look of that last wave, he's going to bump up to first place. Does come through with a 6-5-0. That means Kelly now needs a 2-5-7. Plenty of time to go. Going left, that was Matthew McGillivray. Escaped the implosion, but then gets detonated on. As we see now, some masterful backside surfing. All four of these surfers, regular footers. 
And in looking at Barron's last wave, again, how much he was having to gyrate, grab his rail, and pull up through that barrel, I would say that a backside tube ride while pumping has to be the most difficult thing to do in all of surfing. Yeah, Chris, I mean, pumping through a barrel backside, as any backsider that has to surf a back door can attest, it's one of the most scary things to do is surf backside and um, have to pump through the barrel, especially in waves of con consequence. But there's so many people out here at Pipeline that have adapted to it. They've made the changes. They're very comfortable. As you can see, all of these surfers here in this heat backside when they go to Pipeline. And all of them having to use some type or some form or type of the same, uh, same theory to get through the barrel. They all either got to grab their rail or pump through the barrel. And going back to what you said, backside tube riding is definitely not something that just comes naturally to a lot of people. But there are some people that it does come naturally to. Yeah, for three of these surfers in the water, they've had uh, somebody to study for the past 30 years in Kelly Slater. And you, you can see the influence, no doubt. Here we go, a quick paddle there. So Jordy Smith had priority. And we'll see if that uh, will switch with Matthew McGillivray. That was definitely a priority uh, mistake, I would say. We're still waiting on to see if that's gonna change party, but um, out here at Pipeline, when you paddle, we we're talking about it earlier, you wanna paddle hard, fast, and you want a few extra strokes to get yourself down that face of the wave and in. Quick look at Jordy, lay drop straight into the pit and comes out after the spin. A little side slip, Herbie Fletcher move to come out of that tube right there. Jordy Smith, an amazing backside tube rider and goes back out to the lineup to see Kelly Slater doing, almost doing goat things. I'm always surprised when Kelly Slater falls into barrel. I mean, I, I can't help. Yeah, you tend to see a lot of the best get a little over greedy though. I mean, I've seen it a handful of times from John, Kelly, it's, uh, and Jamie. They, they get that drag right on the foam ball and it's either a 10 or a one. And uh, right now, those 4 a.m. buoy readings are starting to hit pipeline, and it is absolutely turning off. Look at these waves coming in. I think there's going to be 12 foot waves here in the next hour for sure. This tells me that board selection is critical today because if guys were riding 6.4s, six 6.5s six earlier this morning, I mean, are they going up in, in inches or are they switching boards before these next heats? Yeah, I mean, they're. The surfers will make the adjustments according to the swell. The swell is coming up. The wind's picking up a little bit. And here we go, Baron Mamiya on his equipment that he chose. Looking very good, Chris. Oh my gosh, just perfect. Sliding into this, coming out with the spit. You're watching a classic duel. I I'm not gonna say changing of the guard because Kelly's got a lot left in the tank, but this is setting up to be just a stellar matchup gurgling out of the depths that wave takes out that surfer and it is just pumping. You can feel the beach shaking. Gillivray gathering himself after a brutal wipeout line stacking to the horizon. I mean, it's jumped up three, five, six feet in the last half hour. Yeah, there's a couple really big buoy readings out on that far buoy, which is between seven to nine hours out. and. I think that's what we're starting to see right here is that uh, that 14 feet at 16 seconds is starting to rock the reefs here at Pipeline. Wow, uh, just like a, like a machine, these waves are just pounding this reef. Three minutes and 15 seconds to go for McGillivray and Jordy Smith. Jordy Smith needs a 3-5-1. Hawaiian Water Patrol eyes on all four surfers in the lineup as well as our photographers and filmers who are definitely earning it today. Speaking of earning it, this paddle out has been brutal for McGillivray. Not only did he get absolutely detonated, but then he's got to make his way through the white water. Stamina, health, I mean, training, strength, it's all coming into play in this heat. Here goes Barron's replay. Yeah, just sliding through that barrel, I mean, perfectly slotted. His equipment choice is on point right now. His wave selection, even better. And look at how he just uses that backside to slow down a little bit. Make sure he's not too deep. Get back on the foam ball. Slow down again, put on the brakes. What's up, Baron Mamiya is here, world. Love it. I mean, this is this poetry in motion. I mean, that's exactly how to do it, right there, Baron Mamiya. I mean, if you're gonna take on the GOAT, 
you're going to take him head on and you're going to grab the goat or the bull, if you want to call it, by the horns. And right now, that's what Barry Mamiya is doing. He's confident. He's poised to really, really make a name for himself in this seat, especially going up with the likes of Kelly Slater. And here you go, Chris. This was Kelly Slater's wave earlier. And nothing wrong with Kelly surfing. It was the wave that was a little too west, like we talked about earlier. Bent out to sea. And then we have Jordy Smith right behind, needing a score, coming out after the spit. And you can tell by that expression, Jordy liked that. I mean, all these waves just came on in the last minute. Strider, what are the energy levels like in the lineup right now? Well, the energy levels are through the roof. Surfers paddling by, breathing hard. Uh, you know, Baron Mamiya paddled by. Just, he had this gigantic smile on his face. I just want to touch on holding the line knowing that there's a 12-foot washer coming outside and head staying on the inside, hoping for that wave to catch that wave as I think doubled up on the first ledge. It was a big move for him and he just, it paid off big time. That wave was so round and so incredibly perfect wrapping down the reef. It was one of those dream waves and he was right there for it. Everything worked out for him and my hat's off to him for holding the line, staying underneath the whole thing and getting the best wave of that. Wow, I can't imagine what it looks like from the channel there. On any other given day, if there was not a contest out here, there'd be about 100 hungry surfers. And these two guys right next to me would not be sitting in these chairs. They would be right on the peak. Chris Cote here with Makua Rothman and Billy Kemper. Big numbers flying across the board. Baron Mamiya, an 867, one of the highest single waves of the day. Why, Billy, did uh, the judges deem that wave the best wave of this heat so far? I think, for one, it was the size of the wave. It was one of the bigger pipe waves we've had today. Um, then you go into style. Look at how comfortable he was, where he positioned himself. He's riding the foam ball from start to, to finish. And I think when you do that on the bigger waves of the day, that's where you're going to deem excellent scores. I was also touching earlier, it's hard to go into the excellent range by stalling, but I think how heavy and critical where he was positioning himself, like above and near that foam ball, you have to deem that excellent. I mean, yeah, there's room to go bigger, but that was very, very well ridden. Yeah, and I feel totally safe in promising all of you surf fans there will be more excellent rides today. You're watching the Billabong Pro Pipeline. We'll be back with more action. The GOAT is in the lineup. Incredible visuals from one of the most dynamic surfers in the draw. Baron Mamea, as it stands right now, a huge lead over Kelly Slater. Slater needs a 10 if he wants to take the win in this matchup against his Wiley wild card. Mamea with an 8.67 and a 6.50, looking solid at Pipeline. Chris Cote here with Makua Rothman and Billy Kemper. If the last 30 minutes is any indication of what we're gonna see for the rest of the day. I hope your couch or your seat, your office chair, wherever you're watching, I hope it has a seat belt. Cause you're gonna to need to fasten that and prepare yourself. It's about to get radical here at Pipeline. Oh yeah, Chris. Well, you know who's gonna strap their seat belt on is Mr. Slater out there, the GOAT. He um, needs a 10 point ride, which is by no means out of his reach. Um, this kind of reminds me of when Kelly was up against Timmy Reyes once upon a time out here at Pipeline. He needed two huge scores, and I think within two minutes, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even 90 seconds, he got a nine and a 10, or maybe two nines. 
And uh, you can never count this guy out no matter what. He is the GOAT. Baron Mamiya is taking it to him. Full blast right now. Future GOAT potential with Baron Mamiya. He is that good. And we get back to the lineup now. Your secondary priority heat is a big one as well. Homies. Igarashi, Fioravanti, teammates on Quicksilver. These two surfers grown up together, and now they're experiencing a magical super heat going up against each other, but also sharing the lineup with Kelly Slater and Baron Mamiya. This is what I guess any surfer would ask for growing up when you're competing against your buddies in the amateur ranks. You're going, oh, one day we're going to be doing this at Pipeline. That day is here for Kanoa Igarashi and Leonardo Fioravanti. Yeah, I mean, these guys are sparring partners, best friends, travel around the world surfed you know many heats before and i think for them to compete out here at firing pipeline this is always the goal you know watching zeke and seth same situation you know they want to shake hands on the beach go out there do work and uh shake hands when they get back and may, may the best man win now, this is going to be such a fun matchup so they have they start with 40 minutes on the clock same rules as always top two waves add it up to see who has the highest number to advance through. This is an elimination round, of course, so if you lose here, your run is done. And you're focused on sunset around the corner. 15.40 to go for Mamiya and Slater. Slater needs a 10 to get through. He's had five career 10s out here at Pipeline. Multiple wins uh, in every iteration of this event. Uh, Kelly Slater uh, is a synonymous name with Pipeline, which a lot of people were surprised about early on coming from Cocoa Beach, Florida, that has no waves similar to Pipeline. Uh, for Baron Mamiya, at what age do you think Baron really started to cut his teeth out here at Pipe? Uh, Baron's been out here since a you know young teenager charging. Um, he's always been a standout. Um, but like Billy was saying earlier, he always rode really small boards, and um, he'd get really good ones every once in a while. Now that his equipment is really on point, he's getting really good ones all the time. He's really the standout out here. And, um, you know, I'm really uh, excited to see this next heat as well between Firavanti and Igarashi. Same era, same uh, guys. And here you go, the GOAT. Kelly Slater up and riding Chris Cote. I love that, just bulldozing his way through the lineup, straight into the barrel. And the perfect exit. This is not a replay. This is not a highlight package. This is what Kelly Slater does, wave after wave after wave. One of those surfers that, I mean, if that was a silhouette and you didn't see barely anything, you would know it's Kelly Slater. There's no surfer like him. No, there is not. Kind of like Michael Jordan on a pair of Jordan shoes. Oh, yeah. That, that dunk is, um, you know, you can spot it from a mile away, just like this man right here. The silhouette shows it all. And uh, let's walk through this wave. This might be the best wave of the heat. One big pump sitting on the foam ball. Wow beautifully ridden. That's going to be a really good score. I think he's uh, going to be knocking the, the door for the second half of this heat against Barron. So with Barron having priority, um, this is about to get really exciting. Look at that wall. I mean, not a drop of water out of place. It, it does a little kind of kick out at the end. It, it's very subtle, but you can tell Slater <laughs> means business right now. Not taking Barron Mamiya lightly at all. Oh, yeah, Chris Cote, you could tell he liked that one. Came out right here. There's a big wraparound cutback. Signature Kelly Slater. He really kind of put this move into play out here at Pipeline, coming all the way back around. Once upon a time, he would have wrapped that nose back up 12 o'clock. But right here, as he kicks out, a little flare at the end. Little, uh, <laughs> this guy, like to he likes to play mind games as well. Oh, yeah. You know, guys get way out in front. They got two big scores. And then, ha-ha, here I come. And it, you know, it really... I watched him break a lot of surfers like that. You know, a lot of people thinking, you know, I got two good scores. He's almost comboed. Here comes Kelly right back with a score just as high as yours or better. And even though those guys are still in the lead, he still breaks them down in their next waves to improve upon the scores that they have. They start to fall apart. They don't make the wave. And they got to remember they are in 
the lead. Yeah, Kelly's got a million ways to beat you. Oh, yeah. And we'll see what happens next. 12.30 to go. Jordy Smith, all the way from Durban, South Africa, comes through with a clutch performance to take out Matthew McGillivray, standing by with Rosie Hodge. He's been outstanding throughout this event, but Jordy, Matty McGillivray, the young South African fellow countryman, he was a worthy opponent for you. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we saw him open up on that first wave. I think he got an eight-point ride. Um, the kid's got mad skill. And, um, yeah, you know, it always sucks to come up against your fairly co fellow um, countrymen. But um, this is a job. So, yeah, it's, um, every, I treat everybody the same. Well, you had a pretty hefty knee injury um, in the middle to the beginning part of last year. Uh, you got a bit of tape on your foot. How are you feeling physically? Yeah, I've just kind of been battling it. You know, obviously I had the knee injury last year. I overcame that. Um, knee felt amazing and then my first day here in Hawaii had a good surf out of pop kind of got a little greedy went back out again in the afternoon and um, ended up trying to turn out a doggy door and um, yeah I ended up fracturing my big toe my left foot my front foot so um, it was a bummer you know I was kind of 50 50 on whether I'd be able to surf and then I just you know obviously seeing the forecast it was like pretty hard to pass up and um, yeah I just got an anti-inflammatory from Spencer Chang and that's it. you know I know it's going to be painful when I stand up, but um, I think it's, it, it, it's even more pain if you don't go out there and get those waves. <laughs> well, surfing through the pain, we are going to see round of 16 hit the uh, hit the water. Your heat's going to be a little bit later with this rising swell. What are you going to make of that one? Yeah, rising swell. I mean, I got rised all the way in <laughs> all the way into the shoreline uh, with about three minutes left. So definitely stepping up the board, that's for sure. Um, it's starting to mack. The wind's the wind's definitely picking up a bit. So. I think positioning is going to be key, and yeah, hopefully I can be on it too. Jordy, impressive performance. Thank you for your time. And guys, just an update on Carlos Munoz. He will be surfing in heat four of this round coming up against Lucas Messina. He did uh, dislocate his shoulder a little earlier today. The guys in Animal is going to be back out there in the water to compete. Wow. Toughness all around. Great, great interview there with Jordy Smith. I love that. The flags, the faces, the sponsors, the friends. Blinders on when you hit the water. A massive set coming through, blasting through our field. The biggest set of the day. Shock and awe hits pipeline. What? You, you tell us. I, I have no idea. That was just terrifying. Yep. I mean, these guys are sitting on first reef, and there's a very fine line when these second reef waves start coming through. That wave actually looked insane, but I think it did bend a bit out to sea, like Strider mentioned earlier, which happens a lot with these westerly swells. Um, you know, it is starting to get very heavy. You can see that boil. That's the traditional pipeline boil. And it's actually been pretty crazy to watch the people who know pipeline and the people who don't throughout the last few days. You look at a lot of the very well-ridden waves and the waves that stand out at pipeline and everyone's taken off behind that boil where I've seen a lot of surfers pos positioning themselves way on the shoulder of it and just knowing that there's no excellent score available on that side unless you're looking right and uh, <laughs> I don't think there's too many big rights uh, the last few days. Look, here goes Kanoa, foam ball ride, and oh, almost squeaking through, but just getting caught, getting a little too greedy on that one. Disappears there. Crazy, crazy moments happening at Pipeline right now. Strider Wasilewski is in the war zone. Strider, that last set was intense. Here comes another one. I was just watching that set, kind of looking at like my lineup. Knew I had to get out of the way. Now, everybody almost got cleaned up, all the photographers. I'm gonna start panicking. I think it's gonna come again, but looking in, watching Slater wear that thing on the head. I'm talking right on the head. Having to come up, having to duck dive the next 10 footer on the on the reef, poking through, getting sucked back over. He did get some scrapes, said he's okay, but it is on out here, man. It is coming up fast. And we saw the buoys jump, and we're watching pipeline jump. We're jumping in the channel, let me tell you, it's on. Wow, Kenny Loggins said it best. They are riding into the danger zone. And for all of you young, aspiring professional surfers, how bad do you want it? Are you ready for this? The uh, end boss happens at the beginning of the season this year. Pipeline showing its teeth. And here we go, Kelly Slater fighting back. Deep bottom turn, straight to the pocket. A beautiful combination there, just almost escapes the guillotine, clamps down on his shoulders. He wore that wave like a V-neck sweater. <laughs> yeah, Chris Cote, how bad do you want it is the name of the game out here at Pipeline. Kelly Slater, 
wore that set on the head. That first wave broke right in front of him. He had to bail, duck dive the next one, got sucked over. There we go, Baron Bonilla up Baron. in riding Let's go. on the Ten right. Point ride. Hippie makes this. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, like I was saying, Kelly Slater, he's back in the lineup. He caught another wave right after that wipeout. You know how bad he wants it. You know how bad he wants every single heat out here. And he's showing it, especially at, what, 50 years old? I mean... 10 days till 50. You, you, can't, you can't get any more, you know, <laughs> more passionate, more wanting it than someone like that. Yeah, you know, he's obviously got all the accolades in the world, in our, in our world, in the world of surfing. But I, I put Kelly Slater up there with Tom Brady, with Michael Jordan, Tony Hawk, the best of the best in any sport. Uh, and what he does and what he's still doing is just incredible. It's beyond. You know, we did see friendly fire with Brazilians going up against each other, South Africans against each other, but that doesn't happen with Kelly Slater because he's from a different planet, so he has no other countrymen to surf against. He's really from Mars. I don't know where Kelly Slater came from, but he's here and he's showing yet again why he is the undisputed goat of surfing. More illustrated right here. Well, here we go. You know, Kelly Slater, after that crazy caught inside pounding, smooth as ice bottom turn and just barely getting clipped by that lip but as you were saying that you put him up there with the tom brady's the michael jordans i think kelly slater is at the top of any sports athlete period his career i think is the longest you know 30 years or more um he's still competing at 50 years old with a chance to win the world title i don't think there's any other athlete on planet earth at that age still competing in the, the most elite you know, level of their sport and still with a chance to be the best. Makua Rothman is spitting facts right now, people. Listen up, here we go, more waves coming. Mamiya again, we just saw Igarashi, the beautiful backdoor ride. Uh-oh, winding up, big finish, boom! Back three, almost nailed for Baron Mamiya. And let's not forget that Baron, Give him a ramp and he will blast. He is kind of a that new prototype surfer who can charge pipeline with the best of them and also do some of the biggest airs. He's actually had award-winning video parts already this year. The kid is on fire and right now not backing down to Kelly Slater. Not one bit at all, bringing it head to head. This is Baron, this is his pride and joy right here. Look at this wave at pipeline. Very similar to the first one. This is the difference where the new generation is flying, coming really close to riding out of that. Looked like his front foot just slipped off as he was spinning. Yeah, one of the few guys that I'm actually surprised he didn't make that because that is easy for Baron Mamiya. Yeah, when you see guys like him and the Monizes, John, a lot of them coming out of the barrel, the first thing I look for is just a <laughs> yeah. mega ramp. Eli Hanneman, these kids are just like, you know, where I see an opportunity to kick out, they see a huge opportunity to add another three to four points to that score. So, you know, I think a little bit of opportunity lost there, but I think, you know, with this being pipeline, the barrel being the absolute reward, I think he's going to get rewarded very well with the way he rode that wave. Yeah, there, there is a, a film called Snapped Four where Baron Mamiya's uh, part will destroy whatever uh, you thought surfing was. He is that good in the air, in the tube. And he's got four minutes now to try to catch up. Kelly Slater, or excuse me, try to defend as Kelly Slater, his last score comes through just a 1.5. So he has an eight and a 5.17. This is Leo actually splitting the peak with Baron. So, uh, I mean, with all that hype and credit, uh, warranted hype for Baron and Kelly, Kanoa and Leonardo now are sparring hard. Both surfers now waiting for scores to drop for their last rides. Yeah, Chris, you know, seems like every time Kelly Slater's in the water, no matter who he's surfing against, it always eclipses what's going on. You know, that Jordy Matthew Heat was a, you know, that thing was just, I mean, one back of the heats to of the back. day, yeah. Definitely one of the heats of the day. Coming back into Leo Ferravanti, Konoa Igarashi. I mean, you have an Olympic silver medalist in the lineup right now. And, um, you know, this, this event, this pipeline event is so important. It's the first event of the year. To take out a win here and be on top going into sunset, heading into Portugal, it, it means everything to win the first contest of the year. The confidence that you get going into the rest of the season, winning the first event of the year is huge. 
But you do have some wild cards that can pull off the upset out here. And right now we're seeing Baron Mamiya about two minutes and 40 seconds to the biggest win of his life. Let's see if the GOAT Kelly Stater can pull one out. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you, you can't script it. Strider Wasilewski, you have been at the 50-yard line. I mean, you have the most VIP box seats there is in the world right now at Pipeline. Kelly Slater's doing his little water splash thing. What does that mean? There goes the splash. He's conjuring, calling. Conjuring magic, right? We've seen it before. But you know what? It just went epic on Surfline. It went red mode. It's just insane out here. The conditions, the glass, just the light trades, the 12 foot bombs coming in. Just the, the visuals are just incredible from out here. Look, the size of the barrels and how beautiful they are. It just looks like crystals inside the tube, just big, wide open, breathing. When, the, when it takes the breath too and all the, it just sucks in, you can see the little drops off the lip sucking back into the tube. You know that it's time to brace yourself and just spitting out. Some of those things are unbelievably un unable to actually talk about it. It's so hard to actually tell you what it's like to feel that. But these guys are feeling that on every single wave. And that is the best feeling in the world. I mean, you guys know in there, you know, Makua and Billy, about what it's like to have that wave suck in and then spit out and then all that. It's like almost the most beautiful pain you could ever feel. <laughs> Strider fans are getting their money's worth and more, and I'm here for it. Thank you, Strider Wasilewski, from the channel here at Pipeline. Strider puts himself right in the line of fire to bring us those updates. Love to see it. A minute to go. Baron Mamiya with a 15.17, huge heat total. Fending off Kelly Slater with a 13.17. Under a minute to go, Slater needs a 7.18. Meanwhile, Igarashi and Fioravanti going head to head, waiting for some scores to drop. Nothing in the uh, range now that would, they would like to hang on to. So all eyes are now on Slater and Mamiya. Any chance this set can come through in time? If anything can happen with Kelly Slater, we do see a bump in the water here. The boys are paddling. There's 26 seconds. I mean, if it's not this wave, it's the next one. And um, I think there might be time because of the uh, period in the swell, but here's Kanoagi Igarashi with a beautiful, beautiful left nonetheless oh, wow. coming out. And 10 seconds left, there is a wave for Kelly Slater, ladies and gentlemen. And that wave from uh, Kanoa, that's that's exactly what the judges want to see. They want to doubt you. Here we go, Kelly Slater looking for a 7, 1, 8, the go, doing go thing, blasting through. That's what you left. call the greatest surfer of all time. Oh, oh my goodness. G O A T, baby. Wow. That's what we call, you know what we call that? We call that the Bingo Bango Pico Mango. Oh my goodness. There's his family. I, I, if you don't have chills watching this right now, uh, turn the channel. You're watching the wrong thing. That was amazing. So technical. I mean, that. <laughs> That check turn on the bottom turn right there for him to knife it into the barrel, get under the lip, drag himself, get deep as possible, come out and show the world why the goat is the goat. Look at this from the water right here. Just that little adjustment right there was the whole difference to dodge the lip. And then that, look at him, wide open hands. He knows he's home free. What's up? <laughs> Billy said anything's possible and look, everything just happened. Yeah, I mean, I think Baron not pulling that air rotator at the end kind of really left the door wide open and if there is any possibility 9.9 .9 with two minutes left in kelly's court i mean you're giving him the option to win and uh that's what happened the goat sealed the deal scores aren't in yet but i mean yeah I by the say. looks of it that is uh that's pretty damn good surfing out of pipeline. With everything that transpired in the last four seconds of that heat, of course, Kelly Slater needs a 7-1-8. And looking back at that wave, the drama, the excitement, the energy, everything was there. So now it's up to the judges. Makua, what do you that's, think? That, that's not hard. That's I an mean, easy one for you. This is the judges, this is easy for the judges. I mean, the exact score, maybe not, but that was, I gotta say that was up there with his eight point ride. I mean, he was so steep, he was so deep, he made the adjustments to get in the barrel, and Kelly Slater doing Kelly Slater things. Like I said earlier, 
you don't give this, if there's any time left on the clock, no matter what the score is, combo situation or not, that man on your screen you see right there, there's a reason he's the best ever. And look at those scores on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. Kelly Stater with a 9.23. And the crowd goes wild, and Rosie Hodge is right in the mix. Wow. What a lesson. Kelly Slater, are you even real at the moment? I mean, tell me about that. What? How many seconds were left before your hands left the rail for that nine point ride? There was less than 20 when I saw it, when I saw the wave. Uh, I gotta go give Baron a high five real quick. I'm sorry, I don't wanna cut you off. And for Baron Mamiya, I mean, pretty much did everything he could do. He just went up against uh, the Miracle Man himself. Well, Kelly, there was four seconds left as your hands left the rail. Is there any better feeling in surfing? Hard hot battle. Congratulations, Baron and Kelly. And Italo Ferreira. That's how we do it, you know? That's what it's all about. It's hard not to get emotional, Kelly, but as you stand on the sand, what is that emotion that you're feeling? Just having, them, having another moment like that, you know? I know it's early in the contest, but Barron's, he's the next generation out here, you know, and it's just a pleasure to surf against him. And I was trying to process the heat. You know, I made a, a few errors on waves maybe in the first half, and he really capitalized. And he was sitting really deep, really aggressive line. I was kind of sitting on kind of where I was lining up earlier because I thought there would be some rights that would sneak wide or deep for the right and um, you know he just decided to sit way underneath the ledge deep and a lot of times if the wave doesn't have enough west in it you can't make it across the reef from there the score of but he got that one really good one and, and uh, you know I, I, then, then I got I got cleaned up by that big set and it really took a lot of the wind out of me because I fought hard to try and swim under it and I, I was pretty winded then I got that one that closed out it was just I just wasn't feeling it you know and then um, I just calmed down and so you know what Either the wave comes and I get a chance or not, and I'll be happy for Baron if I don't get it, you know. And um, either way, I was going to be stoked. It was a good, exciting finish. But um, it's just it's just crazy thinking back on 30 years, how many times that's happened to me and just gone my way. I don't know what to chalk it up to, but except for, uh, you know, spending my life in the ocean. Manifesting and motivation. If you look in your crystal ball, where do you see yourself at the end of this waiting period? Oh. Well, there's a whole lot of guys I'd like to surf against in this contest, so I'd like to make that final and, and get through a few of them, but we'll see what happens. You know, with both these guys have had my number, Leo and uh, Kanoa Sayo, both these guys, either one of them, bring it, but <laughs> we call. anyways, yeah. We can't wait, Kelly. Well, we'll be back with more from the Billabong Pro Pipeline. Don't go anywhere. The waves are on the way.